This is part six in the Luminar 4 training videos that Skylum have kindly allowed me to share here on the channel with you guys. So I hope you enjoy this one. This is all about the light panel. And so yeah, sure you can be super simple with the editing because it's got all the AI and just crank that accent AI slider up and you get great results with that. But understanding things a little deeper with the light panel I think is really important. I am particularly fond of this video because it features examples of some of my family photos, um, which are obviously very dear to me. I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get into it. So here we have three images that we're going to work on. As you can see, these last two look pretty underexposed and dark on the people. And this image here was shot on a really nice hot sunny day, but it kind of doesn't really feel like it. So let's see what we can do. Let's come over to the edit tab, come to essentials, and then click on the light tool. From this drop down here, you'll see this first section here is all to do with the white balance and the color temperature. The number here represents the color temperature in Kelvin, but you don't need to really concern yourself with that. All you need to know is if you go to the left, things get blue. If things come to the right, things get orange. So we're warming things up to the right, cooling them down to the left. And normally for daylight, things sit somewhere around this middle region here. So if I want to warm this photograph up, what I can do is just grab the slider and move it slightly to the right so it's still believable, but we're getting a lovely sense of that summer warmth. The tint below just deals with the greens and the magenta. And normally I find you don't need to move this slider too far, but in this case you might just want to push it a little bit into the magenta, which again is helping with that sense of warming the image up. Color temperature is a great way to imbue your photography with a sense of warmth or coolness. But the other thing you can do is go for a much more accurate representation of the scene as it was captured. And you can either do that by trying to fine tune the color balance yourself or grab this eyedropper tool here and then find a place within the scene which should be neutral. So we've got a couple of options. You've got the white black of the football here or within the wheel here. I can see a little area of shadow right there. So if I click on that, Luminar has done a great job of neutralizing the colors within this photo and giving me a very accurate representation of the true color balance on the day. For my aesthetic preference, I would actually warm this up slightly and bring in that nice warm tone. I'm super pumped to be sharing videos on photo editing with you guys. So if that's something that you're into as well, um, why not subscribe to the channel? I would honestly love to have you as a subscriber. It honestly means the world to me. Thanks guys. In this example, let's have a quick look at what we can do. As you can see, there's a nice bright highlight through here where the sun's setting, but it's a little blown out. It's too bright in this area here. The area of interest should probably be the subjects. So that's me with my two children. So let's see what we can do to actually improve this photograph just using the light tool. Let's open up the panel and first of all we're greeted with the temperature sliders so if we want we can warm this up slightly and we can grab the magenta and perhaps boost that up a little bit and now we've got a much more pleasing color palette to work with. From here I'm going to boost the exposure slightly. Now as you can see we get a nice exposure on the people within the photograph, but we're starting to lose all of that lovely richness and detail that we had in the sky here. So let's see what we can do about that using these other sliders. Let's bring the exposure just down slightly so we've still got some detail in the sky. And now using the highlight slider, let's bring that to the left. And as you can see, we just recover some of that detail there in the sky. And what we can do now is use the shadow slider just to bring up a little bit of that detail on the foreground and the subjects within the photo. Now that's looking heaps better. Let's have a quick look at our before and after. Before and after. A really marked improvement. But let's take things one step further and dive into the advanced settings. Here we now have access to the whites and the blacks. Now these are talking to the very brightest and the very darkest parts of the image. So if your blacks are washed out, you can actually grab this slider and bring them down to create a true black. But I'm happy where the, they are within our photograph, so I'll just double click that to reset it. Because things in the sky are getting a little bleached out, I might just grab the white slider and bring that down to the left. You can see on the right hand side of the image that we're actually recovering quite a bit of detail there. If I reset it 
and then drag it again you'll see on that area there that's bringing in a nice bit of detail and what you can do with these sliders is just jump around between them until you've tweaked things to get them exactly as you like so we might want to bring up the exposure again slightly we might want to add in a little more contrast now we've done some other adjustments and perhaps we don't need to take the shadows quite as high let's say we're done with that let's look at our before and after before and after a huge improvement now in this video, I'm going to talk briefly on this section here, which is the curve section. It's extremely powerful and it's quite an in-depth tool. So I'm just going to give you a really brief overview here. This line here, if we grab it, we create a point on that line, which we can then drag up to brighten the image or down to darken the image. Depending where on this curve, you actually place the points, you can actually control the luminance of your photograph, the brightness of it very precisely. So in this instance, why don't we, down on the bottom half here, bring it up slightly. The left hand side here talks to the shadows and the right hand side talks to the highlights. Let's grab another point here because we're getting quite bright in the highlights and just bring that down. If you feel like your image needs more contrast, what you can do is create an S shape within this curve by putting one up and pulling one down and that will actually increase contrast. That's not something I want to do in this image so we'll return the curve back to its base. One other thing that curves can be really useful for is actually color toning and color grading your image. So for example, if we went into the red channel here by clicking the red dot and clicked and grabbed that line if you bring it up, it's adding red into the image. If you bring it down, it's taking the red away. Or another way of looking at that is it's adding red's complementary color, which is cyan. So using these color channels is a really powerful way of actually creating interesting color tones and color looks to your image. So let's have a quick look at our before and after, and you'll see that just through this light panel, we've really created quite a difference. Here's our before and here's our after, our before and our after. Let's look at one more image and see what we can do very quickly with what we've learned. So in this example, I'll move at a slightly quicker pace and show you how we can improve this photograph very quickly using just the light panel. So I'm gonna bring the exposure up somewhere around there. I'm gonna add a little contrast. Perhaps we'll bring the highlights down just to protect them boost up the shadows and that's bringing up the detail in the other side of his face there. The whites and blacks look pretty good where they are and if I wanted to add some contrast let me come to this channel here bring that down boost that up maybe we don't want to boost that up too much leave that there and we can say here's our before here's our after and we really improved that photograph really quickly. So I hope you liked that video guys. In the next Luminar 4 photo editing video I've got for you, it's all about um, correcting perspective. So when you're shooting architecture and lines are kind of converging and doing weird things, how important it is to get that right, how it's easy, super easy to fix in Luminar 4 and also the crop tool. So that's the next video that you should see popping around my head somewhere here, somewhere, I don't know. <laughs> Join me in the video. Cheers.